lost civilizations have always kept archaeologists, historians, and the general public in awe. Throughout history, adventurous explorers have scanned above and beyond, through mountains and seas, to find ancient societies that strived thousands of years ago and were eventually lost in time. Ranging from the pyramids of Egypt to the city of Atlantis, rediscoveries of lost cities continue to fascinate us. They give us significant insights into the rich tapestry of human history. Most people in today's generation think that the age of exploration is over. Since we have seen it all and traveled the world, they believe there is nothing left to explore. Well, modern explorers are working day and night to prove that wrong. Even today, explorers are rediscovering lost sites with intriguing facts that make us question the rise and fall of different civilizations and unveil secrets about our own history. So, in this video, we will be rediscovering lost civilizations with modern explorers to have a glance at their enigmatic remnants of existence. Why do we study lost civilizations? As mentioned earlier, many people think the age of exploration is over. However, in this digital age, modern explorers, scanning the seas, mountains, and space, have been going on adventures to push the boundaries of human knowledge and share them with the public. Many modern-day explorers are utilizing social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube to share the latest information and educate the audience concerning new discoveries. The fascinating part is that exploration in this age goes beyond our planet. Hence, exploration can never come to an end. Studying rediscoveries of lost cities has a meaning of its own. The most significant reason to study lost civilizations is to unveil mysteries that can give modern-day thinkers great insight regarding human existence. By examining and analyzing remnants of societies that persisted thousands of years ago, Modern-day archaeologists and historians can make comparisons and build a deeper connection between the past and the present. The knowledge concerning the technological and societal advancements that existed years ago can help us progress in the present times by enriching our thought processes. Moreover, we get to reflect on the achievements of our ancestors. The Lost City of Petra Carved directly into vibrant red, white, pink, and sandstone cliff faces, the prehistoric Jordanian city of Petra was lost to the Western world for hundreds of years. Located amid rugged desert canyons and mountains in what is now the southwestern corner of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Petra was once a thriving trading center and the capital of the Nabataean Empire between 400 BC and AD 106. The city sat empty and in near ruin for centuries. Only in the early 1800s did a European traveler disguise himself in Bedouin costume and infiltrate the mysterious locale. In 1985, the Petra Archaeological Park was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and in 2007 it was named one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. The Nabataeans, before they were conquered and absorbed into the Roman Empire, controlled a vast tract of the Middle East from modern-day Israel and Jordan into the northern Arabian Peninsula. The remains of their innovative networks of water capture, storage, transport, and irrigation systems are found to this day throughout this area. Scholars know the Nabataeans were in Petra since at least 312 BC, says archaeologist Zidon Almuhaisen of Jordan's Yarmouk University. Almuhaisen, who has been excavating in Petra since 1979 and specializes in the Nabataean period, says no one has yet found any archaeological evidence dating back to the 4th century BC. The earliest findings thus far date back only to the 2nd and 1st centuries BC. But more clues remain beneath the surface. We have uncovered just 15% of the city, he says. The vast majority, 85%, is still underground and untouched. Numerous scrolls in Greek and dating to the Byzantine period were discovered in an excavated church near the Winged Lion Temple in Petra in December 1993. Researchers at the American Center of Oriental Research in Amman, the capital, are now analyzing the scrolls and hope they will shed light on life in Petra during this period. Once Rome formally took possession of Petra in AD 106, its importance in international trade began to wane. The decay of the city continued, aided by earthquakes and the rise in importance of sea trade routes, and Petra reached its nadir near the close of the Byzantine Empire's rule, around AD 700. 
Visitors today can see varying blends of Nabataean and Greco-Roman architectural styles in the city's tombs, many of which were looted by thieves and their treasures thus lost. Today, local Bedouins selling tourist souvenirs hawk their wares not far from the place where Arabs believe Moses struck a rock with his staff, causing water to burst forth. City of Atlantis The story of Atlantis, a legendary lost island was first told by Plato, in his dialogues, Timaeus and Critias. Both were written about 330 BC. In his stories, Plato describes Atlantis as a legendary island, idealizing it as an advanced society where utopia dominates. In Atlantis, wisdom is the primary characteristic of the people, and their wisdom should bring peace in the world. The idea of an utopian society has captivated dreamers for generations, and many have tried to find and locate the city Plato described in his stories. Plato has given vivid and comprehensive descriptions and observations how does Atlantis look. He describes the mythical city as the home for the best architects and engineers in the world. The city is rich with palaces, temples, docks and harbors. The capital city, according to Plato's descriptions, was built on a hill and was surrounding by several rings of water. All the rings were joined by tunnels that made it possible for ships to sail through them. All the outer rings were connected to the ocean with a huge canal. Outside of the capital city there were huge fields designed for farmers to grow food for the city's population. Past the fields, the wealthy villagers lived up in the mountains. The homes of the wealthy villagers looked amazing, enriched with fountains, stones walls and precious metals covering the walls. The Legend of Atlantis and Poseidon In his works, Plato mentions that Atlantis was actually ruled by Poseidon, the sea god in ancient Greece. Poseidon was given ruling over Atlantis, and the sea god used the city to show his appreciation for his wife. He built a large home for his mortal wife on the hill and in the middle of the island. According to Plato, Atlanteans were great engineers, and their technology was much more advanced than in other parts of the world. That is what made Atlantis special, as it was technologically and educationally much more advanced. The palace, which Poseidon built for his wife was surrounded by wife rings of water and land. The palace was connected through tunnels that were large so ships can pass through them. Wealthy villagers in Atlantis also lived in the mountains. Plato describes many spectacular buildings and fountains in Atlantis, not just the palace that Poseidon built for his wife. Poseidon's wife had ten sons, five sets of twins. Each son was given one part of Atlantis to rule, and it worked for generations. Atlantis was a peaceful place, a truly utopian society where wisdom prevails. The legend of Atlantis ends with the wrath of Zeus. Apparently, the citizens of the city became greedy, corrupt and they let their emotions get the best of them. Zeus summoned all the gods, and decided to teach Atlantis a lesson. Sadly, the story ends there, so it is unknown how and if Zeus destroyed the city. There are several modern theories that try to explain the existence and location of the mythical and utopian city. We will delve into some of the plausible and popular ones. The city of Atlantis, and the term utopia that Plato used had a huge impact on the work of Thomas More, who wrote his own book called Utopia. Moore lived in the 16th century, and he was inspired by travelers in America. His book describes an imaginary and fictional land, which he calls the New World. Furthermore, Utopia had an impact on another writer passionate about utopian societies, Sir Francis Bacon. Bacon wrote a book called The New Atlantis, where he also describes utopian society located in the western coast of America. Ignatius Donnelly is one of the most popular authors when the subject is Atlantis. He was a firm believer in Mayanism, and argued that all antique civilizations descended from the mythical city that Plato described. Donnelly saw Atlantis as a technologically sophisticated and more advanced city, and drew several parallels between the new and old world. He is considered as the father of the revival of Atlantis. He believed that Atlantis was destroyed by the Great Flood mentioned in the Bible. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was a Russian writer, and she is often mentioned as one of the creators of the Nazi myth and their supremacy. 
Blavatsky took a different approach to the myth of Atlantis. She wrote about racial evolution, not primate evolution. According to her, the citizens of Atlantis were the fourth race, which was then succeeded by a more superior, fifth race, or as she called it, the Aryan race. The Aryan race and its supremacy is one of the founding principles of Nazism. The exact location of the city has been a topic for many researchers, archaeologists, historians and geographers. Many have tried to find it, and questioned its existence and location. The locations for Atlantis vary from the Andes Mountains in Bolivia, South America, to Florida, Central America, to China and Africa. Here are some possible theories about the location of the lost utopian city. The Mediterranean Sea is one of the common locations for geographers. Since Plato lived in ancient Greece, a time when the Mediterranean was commonplace for traveling. Some of the locations that have been mentioned as possible locations in the sea include the islands Crete, Sardinia, Sicily, Santorini, Cyprus and Malta. Also, land-based cities as Troy and Tantalus have been mentioned as locations. The land-based cities are also near the Mediterranean Sea. The Maya The Mayan civilization is one of the most intriguing lost civilizations located in the Mesoamerican region, now known as Mexico. It still confuses and puzzles historians and archaeologists. Although geographically distant from ancient Egypt, the Mayan civilization is said to have great similarities with the former civilization. The Maya civilization was a Mesoamerican civilization that existed from antiquity to the early modern period. It is known by its ancient temples and scripts. The Maya script is the most sophisticated and highly developed writing system in the pre-Columbian Americas. The civilization is also noted for its art, architecture, mathematics, calendar, and astronomical system. The Maya civilization developed in the Maya region, an area that today comprises southeastern Mexico, all of Guatemala and Belize, and the western portions of Honduras and El Salvador. It includes the northern lowlands of the Yucatan Peninsula and the Guatemalan highlands of the Sierra Madre, the Mexican state of Chiapas, southern Guatemala, El Salvador, and the southern lowlands of the Pacific Littoral Plain. Today, their descendants, known collectively as the Maya, number well over 6 million individuals, speak more than 28 surviving Mayan languages, and reside in nearly the same area as their ancestors. The Archaic Period, before 2000 BC, saw the first developments in agriculture and the earliest villages. The Pre-Classic Period saw the establishment of the first complex societies in the Maya region, and the cultivation of the staple crops of the Maya diet, including maize, beans, squashes, and chili peppers. The first Maya cities developed around 750 BC, and by 500 BC these cities possessed monumental architecture, including large temples with elaborate stucco facades. Hieroglyphic writing was being used in the Maya region by the 3rd century BC. In the late pre-classic, a number of large cities developed in the Petén Basin, and the city of Kamenaljuyu rose to prominence in the Guatemalan highlands. Beginning around 250 AD, the classic period is largely defined as when the Maya were raising sculpted monuments with long count dates. This period saw the Maya civilization develop many city-states linked by a complex trade network. In the Maya lowlands two great rivals, the cities of Tikal and Kalakmul, became powerful. The Classic Period also saw the intrusive intervention of the central Mexican city of Teotihuacan in Maya dynastic politics. In the 9th century, there was a widespread political collapse in the central Maya region, resulting in civil wars, the abandonment of cities, and a northward shift of population. The Post-Classic Period saw the rise of Chichen Itza in the north, and the expansion of the aggressive Kitsch Kingdom in the Guatemalan highlands. In the 16th century, the Spanish Empire colonized the Mesoamerican region, and a lengthy series of campaigns saw the fall of Najpitan, the last Maya city, in 1697. Rule during the Classic period centered on the concept of the Divine King, who was thought to act as a mediator between mortals and the supernatural realm. Kingship was usually, but not exclusively, one, patrilineal, and power normally passed to the eldest son. 
a prospective king was expected to be a successful war leader as well as a ruler. Closed patronage systems were the dominant force in Maya politics, although how patronage affected the political makeup of a kingdom varied from city-state to city-state. By the late Classic period, the aristocracy had grown in size, reducing the previously exclusive power of the king. The Maya developed sophisticated art forms using both perishable and non-perishable materials, including wood, jade, obsidian, ceramics, sculpted stone monuments, stucco, and finely painted murals. Maya cities tended to expand organically. The city centers comprised ceremonial and administrative complexes, surrounded by an irregularly shaped sprawl of residential districts. Different parts of a city were often linked by causeways. Architecturally, city buildings included palaces, pyramid temples, ceremonial ball courts, and structures specially aligned for astronomical observation. The Maya elite were literate, and developed a complex system of hieroglyphic writing. Theirs was the most advanced writing system in the pre-Columbian Americas. The Maya recorded their history and ritual knowledge in screenfold books, of which only three uncontested examples remain, the rest having been destroyed by the Spanish. In addition, a great many examples of Maya texts can be found on stele and ceramics. The Maya developed a highly complex series of interlocking ritual calendars, and employed mathematics that included one of the earliest known instances of the explicit zero in human history. As a part of their religion, the Maya practiced human sacrifice. Angkor Wat Angkor Wat was built by the then ruler of the Hindu Khmer dynasty, King Suryavarman II, in the 12th century. It is now the world's largest temple complex, located in Cambodia. The vast religious complex of Angkor Wat comprises more than a thousand buildings, and it is one of the great cultural wonders of the world. Angkor Wat is the world's largest religious structure, covering some 400 acres, 160 hectares, and marks the high point of Khmer architecture. Angkor Wat, near Simrib, Cambodia The city of Angkor served as the royal center from which a dynasty of Khmer kings ruled one of the largest, most prosperous, and most sophisticated kingdoms in the history of Southeast Asia. From the end of the 9th century until early in the 13th century, numerous construction projects were undertaken, the most notable of which was Angkor Wat. It was built by Suryavarman II as a vast funerary temple within which his remains were to be deposited. Construction is believed to have spanned some three decades. All of the original religious motifs derived from Hinduism, and the temple was dedicated to the gods Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu. The five central towers of Angkor Wat symbolize the peaks of Mount Meru, which according to Hindu mythology is the dwelling place of the gods. The mountain is said to be surrounded by an ocean, and the complex's enormous moat suggests the oceans at the edge of the world. A 617-foot, 188-meter, bridge allows access to the site. The temple is reached by passing through three galleries, each separated by a paved walkway. The temple walls are covered with bar-leaf sculptures of very high quality, representing Hindu gods and ancient Khmer scenes as well as scenes from the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. After the Cham people of modern-day Vietnam sacked Angkor in 1177, King Jayavarman VII, reigned 1181 c. 1220, decided that the Hindu gods had failed him. When he built a new capital nearby, Angkor Thom, he dedicated it to Buddhism. Thereafter, Angkor what became a Buddhist shrine, and many of its carvings and statues of Hindu deities were replaced by Buddhist art. In the early 15th century Angkor was abandoned. Still Theravada Buddhist monks maintained Angkor Wat, which remained an important pilgrimage site and continued to attract European visitors. Angkor Wat was rediscovered after the French colonial regime was established in 1863. In the 20th century various restoration programs were undertaken, but they were suspended amid the political unrest that engulfed Cambodia in the 1970s. When work resumed in the mid-1980s, the required repairs were extensive. Notably, sections had to be dismantled and rebuilt. In 1992 the Angkor Complex, which included Angkor Wat, was designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO and was immediately added to the list of World Heritage in Danger. 
In the ensuing years, restoration efforts increased, and Angkor was removed from the danger list in 2004. Today Angkor Wat is one of the most important pilgrimage shrines in Southeast Asia and a popular tourist attraction. The temple complex appears on the Cambodian flag. Yet, as we reflect on the ever-evolving narrative surrounding this remarkable's discoveries, it becomes clear that numerous enigmas persist. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing glimpses into the wonders of our past. And if you liked this video, click here to watch our last video about Mexican Mafia.